This video is on ratios and proportions. And a ratio is just a comparison of two or more quantities. Now, some people think of a ratio as being the same thing as a fraction, but as we're going to see, a fraction is just one way of expressing a ratio. So here's our definition of ratio, comparison of two or more quantities. And our first example, it says three gallons of gas for five lawnmowers. Well, three and five are the two quantities that we are going to uh, be comparing. And the first way that we're going to compare them is using a fraction. And I would write this comparison using a fraction as just 3 to 5. Second way is using what we call colon notation. And I would express the same ratio using colon notation like this, 3 colon and 5. And that's read 3 to 5. The third way we express a ratio is just in words. And so this one we would say 3 to 5. So these are the three ways of expressing a ratio. The fraction notation, that's probably the most commonly used, but these other two ways you see as well. So example number two, 12 touchdowns in eight football games. So I would express this as a fraction, 12 to 8. And now with ratios, typically you want to express them in lowest terms. So 12 to 8, we would reduce to 3 to 2. If I want to write it in colon notation, that would be 12 to 8. And I would reduce that also to 3 to 2. In words, I would also say 12 to 8. And I'd reduce that to... 3 to 2. And then you can see example 3, 3 feet in every yard. You would just write that as 3 to 1, colon notation, 3 colon 1, and then in words, 3 to 1. Now let's take a look at a type of problem that you often see that you can solve using ratios. Example number 4 says a rope that is 10 feet long is divided into two lengths in the ratio of 2 to 3. What are the two lengths that the rope is divided into? So I'm going to start this problem by picking two algebraic expressions to use for my two lengths. I don't know what the two lengths are yet. I only know that they are in the ratio of 2 to 3. So the algebraic expressions I'm going to choose to represent my two lengths are 2x and 3x. Now, the reason I chose those two lengths is because notice, even though I don't know what these values are, I don't know the actual numerical value of the lengths of my rope, I do know that the ratio of these two lengths, 2x to 3x, no matter what the value of x is, they're going to cancel out and leave me with a ratio of 2 to 3. So that's why I chose 2x and 3x as my values for my lengths. So, once I've chosen 2x and 3x as my algebraic expressions here for the two lengths, and since I know that the rope is 10 feet long, I can write an equation. The first length plus the second length is equal to 10, the whole length of the rope. And now I can solve my equation. 5x equals 10. Divide both sides by 5, and I have x equals 2. Well, now that I know the value for x, I can just plug it in for my two lengths here. Take my value and plug it in. 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6. So here are the two lengths of my rope. Actually, I should say 4 feet and 6 feet. Notice that the ratio of the two lengths of my rope, if I take that, my ratio is... 4 to 6, and if I reduce that, I get 2 to 3, which is what I already knew the ratio was. Let's take a look at another similar example. Now, I'm skipping over example number 5. It's very similar to example number 4, so I want you to go ahead and solve that one on your own. I'm going on to example number 6. Example 6 says, in a triangle, the ratio of the measures of the three interior angles is 
1 to 2 to 3. Now you see here we have a ratio involving a comparison of three quantities. Find the measure of each angle. Okay, well I'm going to solve this one very much like I solved the last problem. That is, I'm going to start out by choosing a quantity for my first angle. And I'm going to let my first angle be 1x. I'm going to let my second angle be 2x. And I'm going to let my third angle be 3x. And again, I chose those values for the same reason that I did in the last example, because I know that no matter what x turns out to be, I know that the ratio of these three angles, 1x to 2x to 3x, my x's are again going to cancel out and leave me with angles in a ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. Well, now I have algebraic expressions chosen for each of my three interior angles, and I happen to know what the sum of the three interior angles of a triangle is because I know what the triangle sum theorem says. It says that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So I can set up my equation and I can solve it for x. 1x plus 2x plus 3x gives me 6x. I divide both sides by 6 and I get x equals 30. Now that I know my value for x, I can take it and I can plug it in here for each one of my angles. 1 times 30 is 30, so I know angle 1. 2 times 30 is 60, so I know angle 2. And 3 times 30 is 90, so I know angle 3. Notice that if I add all these angles up, I get 9 and 6 is 15 and 3 is 180 degrees. Also notice if I take the ratio of all three of these angles, 30 to 60 to 90, and if I reduce that by dividing each one by 30, I get 1 to 2 to 3. And you have another example similar to this one in example number seven. Again, I want you to try that one on your own. A proportion. A proportion is just two ratios set equal to each other. And proportions have a particular property that's very useful. Every proportion has equal cross products. And when we say equal cross products, if you take, for example, this particular proportion, notice here I have two ratios set equal to each other. When I say that every proportion has equal cross products, that means when you multiply across the equal sign, you get equal numbers. That is, 3 times 6 is equal to 2 times 9. 3 times 6 is 18 and 2 times 9 is 18. Now this particular property turns out to be very useful in solving proportions. For example, example number 1 on this page says 2 over 4 equals x over 12. So here we have a proportion that is two ratios set equal to each other but we're missing one of the values and we'd like to solve for that value, that missing value x. Well all I need to do is use this property of proportion, the equal cross products property, I'll cross multiply and I know that 4x equals 2 times 12, so 4x equals 24, and I divide both sides by 4 and I get x equals 6. Example number 2. Again I have a proportion x over 5 equals 12 over 15. I'm going to use the equal cross products property and multiply across my equal sign. 15x equals 5 times 12. 15x equals 60. Divide both sides by 15 and I get x equals 4. Now the next example I'm going to do is example number five on your sheet. I'm going to leave examples three and four for you to do. 
And I want to go through example number five because example number five illustrates a very common mistake that some students make in solving these types of proportion problems. So example number five says 4x plus 7 over 12 equals 5 over 4. Now, once again, I have a proportion, two ratios set equal to each other. I'm going to, and I have one of my uh, numbers that I don't know. I've got x here that I want to solve for. I'm going to use my equal cross products property here, and I'm going to, again, multiply across the equal sign. So I'm going to have 5 times 12 equals 4 times 4x plus 7. 5 times 12 is 60. And 4 times 4x plus 7, notice that here I need to use my distributive property. 4 times 4x is 16x, and 4 times 7 is 28. And that's the part that a lot of students miss. They want to jump. In fact, a lot of students will skip this step altogether. And what they'll write down is 5 times 12 equals 16x plus 7. And you see they forget the second half of this using the distributive property. So once I've used the distributive property, I have this. Now the next step is to subtract 28 from both sides. That gives me 16x over here. And let's see, minus 8 is 2, 5 minus 5, 32 equals 16x. I divide both sides by 16, and I get x equals 2. And that's ratios and proportions, and now you have a few more of the examples on your sheet uh, that I want you to fill out, and we will take a look at those in class tomorrow.